You're in. Oh, we're live? You're lying. Just kidding. Um, so welcome to another episode of the Nissan Nerd Podcast. We got a lot going on here today. My name is Miles Hall, and with me as always is Mike D. Hi, guys. <laughs> Glad on to be here. News. Do, 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 do. All right. For those of you interacting with us through social media, thank you again for joining us here today. We love you. Couldn't do this all without you. Uh, we got a lot going on in this episode today. It is Throwback Thursday. We've got a great article, and we take a look back at Nissan's $200 million ad campaign. Uh, we talk about a Nissan internship from hell, and um, later we chat with with our friend and event organizer, Josh Lyman, uh, about Branson Z-Fest. Stay tuned. We'll be back with you in a minute. <laughs> Dude. Uh I'm telling you, I am telling you. You, uh, you, you, you killed that intro, man. That sounded really good. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. By the way, you I spent, that. I spent the last of our money and our budget on a soundboard. You spent our Nissan Nerd Dogecoin on on. I did. I spent. We only had one Dogecoin, <laughs> which. Uh, which got us up to 72 cents. And on 72 cents, yeah. I spent it all on this. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. That's it. <laughs> it's, all, it's all spent. So you, Thank you, you bought Elon a, Musk. <laughs> yeah. You bought a soundboard, right? That's, I did buy a soundboard. That's, that's You know, we've been talking about doing something like that. I'm glad you took the initiative. I'm a little scared, honestly, because, dude, I have – I'm at your mercy. You have the loaded gun in your hand, and I got, I've got i got no defense on this one. No defense. No can defend. No defenses. Nothing at all. <laughs> I, I can do this, but, you know, the bullet's going through my forearm, dude. It ain't going to matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a pretty good bullet. So, right. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, uh, I just figured I would mess with it a little bit and uh, kind of see what we had going on. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, you know, spend a few bucks, spend some time setting it up. I never did. So I think we're going to work out pretty well when everything's said and done. So <laughs> I, I think this is going to, it's definitely going to spice things up, man. So I'm, I'm excited to hear about this, man. I'm a little, I'm nervous, but I'm excited. You shouldn't be nervous. I, uh, I, um, I'm whenever a, a child is given a loaded weapon such as this, what's well, the worst that's going to happen? You know, come on. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do we got coming down the pipeline today, Mike? Oh man. Yeah. Uh, we've, We've got tons and tons of uh, uh, articles for ourselves. First of all, though, I wanted to ask you, you know, it's been a few weeks since uh, we really had a chance to talk, though. How has your last two weeks been? What's happening in Miles' world? Aside from the soundboard, what's uh, what's going on with you? That's funny because I actually spent two weeks on the soundboard. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> well, I, um, a lot going on, man. I've been working on this Datsun 620 project with a VG30 DE stuffed into it. So that's been kind of consuming me as of late. Mm -hmm. um, I'm putting in my concrete for the uh, metal building, my first wave one of my new shop in Albuquerque mm. on the side of a mountain. So that's pretty slick. So just congrats dealing with, dealing with all a, that again. And then, yeah, go ahead. That, that's a, that's a big step, man. The foundation, obviously, I mean, uh, physically and literally, I mean, that's, that's, that's your big start, man. You can start a uh, pretty, yeah. I mean, the rest is almost down. Well, I shouldn't say the rest is downhill, but I mean, once you start getting the walls put up, I mean, you can power or not you can store stuff in there i know you sent up a huge building you you uh you borrowed a u-haul you rented a u-haul yeah what's <laughs> a, a metal quonset it's very militaresque so it's basically mm -hmm. like one big dome structure apparently it's tornado resistant and i don't know if it's miles resistant but we'll have to figure it out as we go <laughs> forth here but but yeah i've got I've got lifts and everything planned out and it's crazy because I'll be dropping in the Albuquerque area. Most likely going to start an Albuquerque club, a Nissan or Z club up there. And then, so we'll, I'll have a small tribe up there. I will never forget you. Of course. Oh, 
Your yeah. heart will go on. Is that what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My heart will go on, and uh, but I could never ever. Uh, I don't think I could ever forget my favorite person in the whole wide world. So yeah, oh, I, never uh, I love you so sweet. much. Oh, I do. <laughs> well, thanks, man. I appreciate. What? Uh, <laughs> how did you, dude? You you premeditated all this. <laughs> what are you <laughs> saying? The, the sorrow music there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's maybe cool, man. a little bit. Perfect. I, I, I think uh, you're giving me a reason to actually uh, go out and, you know, g extend myself outside of Texas and uh, have some trips, man. Go out there and have some fun, dude. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't wait to be out uh, be out there. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be coming back and I'll, I'll be traveling all over everywhere to see all my Z family and my Nissan family, which is spread out everywhere throughout countries and continents and you know um i think with everything with uh you know all technology and everything that's out there is allowing us to do this kind of stuff yep. well, you know as covid lifts we can kind of go from there and start getting everything done yeah man i'll tell you what that dang old internet man you just go on there and point and click 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 it's real easy man <laughs> oh man best what did we do what did we best do 39 cents i ever spent that was it all right. Mm. I, I like it. I'm with the show. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, well, if uh, it seems like you got a drink in front of you, man, do you want to go ahead and uh, oh, yeah. pop this thing off? Yes, we do. So as always, uh, we give um, uh, special thanks, considerations, and thoughts and prayers all to all of our uh, friends and family, extended Nissan, Infinity, and Dotson family. It's out there. Uh, both present and non-present so i just want to give a shout out to everybody and come by to you too buddy all right man come by everybody out there clink for those of you that are on uh, social media with us if you got something with you go ahead and grab it with you and uh, join us and, and put it down your throat <sighs> get that so, yeah mm. did i say that out loud so <laughs> <bad. laughs> gabe and orlando thanks for being here man cheers to you too Okay. <laughs> so we should go ahead and get into news, right? We should get into news. Let's do this. So. All right. All right, man. So let's go ahead. Um, I think that you had the first article. Um, I'll give you the, uh, the lead on this one. Oh, okay. I got you. I see what you wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Revenge of the Nerds? That is totally Revenge of the Nerds. Jesus it Christ. Can only be Revenge of the Nerds. Come on. It's the, one of the best. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk to uh, you about was actually uh, a look back, actually, at um, Nissan spending in 1996 200 million dollars on uh, on their ad campaign. Their well, now legendary ad campaign at the time. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Let me get you all squared up. Yeah. <laughs> Do, 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 do. So the, this article actually came back. Um, I actually threw it up on our page for Throwback Thursday. And then, again, a look back at Nissan's 1996 $200 million ad campaign. A little bit of an old article, but it, um, but it's, it's solid. It, it kind of goes into all the little things that you and I both didn't know about that ad campaign at the time. So in 1996, yeah. Nissan launched the Enjoy the Ride campaign, which is all famous. A lot of us knew all this. Um, we're, you know, we are uh, very familiar with it. Yep. So uh, let me see here. Oh, I'm jumbling. Did you find it? Oh, yeah. There you go. So remember this one? How can I not forget it, man? That's the 300ZX. <laughs> the the van you know we covered some of that about how van halen got a really sweet deal uh for lending their uh their song to to that uh to that commercial i love that i love that commercial go ahead t talk about it some well more. the thing well you and i both didn't know this but i guess van halen got a chunk of this 200 million dollars of course mm -hmm. but so mattel came back and sued nissan for this uh commercial <laughs> because was, of I'm, because of the characters so they a, because yeah. Mattel owned the rights to G.I. Joe, everybody associated this with uh, G.I. Joe and then yeah. Barbie. 
There's G.I. Joe. Of course. You got Ken as this well. Is, this is their suit that they presented, right? Yeah. But um, what's crazy about that, and of course, Ken. So the crazy thing about it is Nissan went back and, um, you know, rebuttaled, but apparently they settled out of court um, with everything at a later time. Today's dollars, it would yeah. be almost $300 million. It'd be a Pixar movie, basically. That's a ridiculous amount of money for, a, I mean, now granted, it's more than just TV, it's magazine ads and billboards, but overall, like, I can't even think of it of a notable campaign ad within the last five years that was anywhere near that amount of money. So it kind of goes to show how, how intensely the Nissan uh, ad executives really, you know, they really went really hard on this campaign. Yeah, it was pretty intense. Um, you know, it, it, it went back and forth and, you know, Nissan, they probably spent more than what they gained at the time. And it, it is set like that. So they spent $1 million alone producing that 300ZX commercial alone. So if I had to guess, that's where the little bit of the Van Halen money might've went. Okay, so yeah. better still, it featured the, uh, the iconic and immortal Van Halen in it, which is what they kind of talk about a little bit in this, but they there did. was a series of these. And then apparently if I had to guess, maybe a cease and desist order kind of came <laughs> from that whole scenario. Yeah. So that's the only thing I can think, you know, um, so it's kind of intense stuff, yeah. but, uh, yeah, this was another commercial that came out with the Pathfinder, a little less known. Did you, can you see that? I can. Yes. This is for the. Hold on. Hold it. Forgive me for not knowing who is the band that's playing. You just aged yourself, my friend. I know. I know I did. I, well, actually, probably in the direction of being young. I, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> which, which doesn't happen quite often. So, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. I'll take but what again, I can get. Uh, <laughs> but again, a great article. Again, a throwback article. I thought it was amazing for uh, for our Throwback Thursday episode. So yeah. again, I, I will have it up on the uh, page here. But uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, that brings back a lot of memories. I remember it being launched. Um, it actually uh, first aired on MTV of all things. So I guess they were chasing that demographic of all things. Yeah, yeah. There was two things I saw with this commercial uh, with this article. It was. Um, this this commercial came out in 1996, so that means just for reference, like the big movie at the time was Toy Story, right? So mm -hmm. whether it was intentional or not, this commercial kind of ran into that that um, it was popular at the time, toys in general, animation and having to do with toys. So whether that was meditated or not, uh, that was a good move. And the yeah. second thing, this is what got me, was you got to think about it, 1996 was the last year of the 300ZX in the United States, right? We're going to nerd yes, out, they, aren't we? Yes. No. Dude. Ah! Remind, <laughs> remind me. Yeah, exactly. What podcast is this, right? So, no. <laughs> but think about it. It's 1996. It's the last year of the 300ZX. It's on the way out in the U.S., but Nissan dishes out over a million dollars for this commercial. It's, yeah. I think, I, I'm, I love the commercial. I'm glad they did it. But I'm pretty sure if, if you have some executives look back on it today, they were like, that probably really wasn't a good idea because there was nothing left to sell. That's a, it, when you budget something over, you know, you want it, the, the, its impact to last year. I always tell people the 300ZX of all things was the most heavily – funded car with not only the development its production it's it's marketing i mean it costed so damn much money and it still does to this day if you own one but oh, yeah. i will say this though i absolutely still think it's one of those classic timeless cars classic yeah. timeless commercial i i still think to this day it's it's listed as one of the most memorable automobile commercials um history to date so yep yeah. the last thing i had here was Okay, so let's say this is the last year of the 370Z, right? Imagine oh. if if Nissan had done this this year. 
if they had made if they went they went out 100 percent on a 370z commercial right now <laughs> there's no more z's to be no more 370z's to be sold but imagine if they had made a, a commercial right now uh for that first of all what song do you think they would use i start well, wondering about you- that I can tell you, if you're the guy that spent that much money walking into that office, all you're going to get is... Shame. (laughs) Shame. Shame. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's so good. It's going to be constant. This is the new level. This is like a a new co-host we just brought on. (laughs) That's it. Hey man, that's the best seventy four cents that we could we can spend on a budget. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Let's, we gotta um, figure out on the next thing we got because we got a lot to cover in this episode. We do. Hey, we did have a, a a note here. Actually, it is from of all people, my dad here. We should know this. It's a Kiss song, dude, from that Pathfinder commercial. It's a classic Kiss song. So, for those of you on Facebook, of course, we are interacting with you online. Keep them coming <laughs> as we go throughout the show, and we're gonna be be sure to share them with you. But yes, did on to the next. Did your Next dad one. just call you out? He did. Because he should know. Dude, I was I was raised on classic rock as it is. I, I, it's I was trying to think of another mean, song. Does, huh? does this mean your your dad doesn't love you anymore? Or is that what's no, going no, on? no. Well, if it wasn't Detroit Rock City and if it wasn't Love Gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is so good. <sighs> Moving on. Okay, Let's moving go. on, moving on. Let's go. I got a story for you, Miles. We're gonna go ahead and, and do this one. Uh, the, the article that I covered was pretty cool. It is one of those obscure stories that just came out this last week from uh, Carscoops.com. They detail what they call what I call an internship from hell. This is from uh, a Nissan internship for hell, from hell to be exact. So I've got the article here from Carscoops. Uh, I think you can see that, right? Can y'all see that? Yeah. So um, let's just start off here. Traffic jams suck. When you're in traffic, nobody likes traffic, right? Much less L.A., New York, some of the most notorious places for having the worst traffic in the world. Now, imagine you're an intern and you're a Nissan intern. They tell you, we want you to intentionally get into traffic. And we want you from that, they're taking... Uh, data. They're managing data uh, that they're using for a, um, a a feature that is actually just now being released on Nissan models. So uh, a little bit more about it. The Tyler the Tyler's name was the engineering intern Tyler Smikowski. Oh, I think I, think I nailed it. Huh? Congratulations on the uh, on the new job, Tyler. Wow! Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm regretting it. <laughs> no taxis. Go on. Yeah. All right. So the story goes: In 2018, Nissan hired an intern uh, by the name of Tyler. Uh, part of his internship essentially was going through, essentially experiencing 64 traffic jams in six major U.S. cities. We're not just talking city. We're talking about cities all over the country. Uh, cities like Los Angeles, Washington, Detroit, Pittsburgh. Baltimore, San Francisco, and gathering data from these traffic jams. This guy was intentionally getting himself into traffic jams. The reason behind it was to gather data specifically for Nissan's most recent um, feature, which is what they call their Pro Pilot Assist Adaptive Cruise Control. And is because of this guy's work and sacrifice. I mean, a lot of people here on the article are, are calling it um, cruel and an and unusual punishment for having subjecting this poor kid to uh, so much traffic, but uh, he handled yeah, it. With... Poor bastard. Yeah. Just sitting there in traffic all day, sitting there. Everybody hates you. Just, you want to end it all. You know what I mean? It's just like, I just, yeah. you cannot wait for it to just be all over. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Jesus go on christ man so anyway uh the guy passed with flying colors uh with the help of uh, tyler's internship work this adaptive cruise control from nissan pro pilot assist is actually being used on uh, it began with the 2021 nissan rogue so for those of you that are owners of that make and model 
you, you likely have th that software. And on the brand new Pathfinder, 2022 Pathfinder, it also has the pr uh, Pro Pilot Assist that uh, Nissan used because of this hard, this young man's hard work. So um, it's one of those okay. stories here that I think is just the most obscure, man. And I really liked it, though. You know what? We need to find this kid because we need to find him, have him come on the show, talk about his trials, tribulations, if he lost, if he went a little sideways with mental capacity. by <laughs> 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 sitting in, in that much traffic for that long. I mean, but if yeah. you're getting paid, it's kind of like, yeah, babe, I'm, you know, but you never know. I mean, you're in your 20s and you land a big job with, uh, with Nissan. And you're like, hey, baby, yeah, I'm working for Nissan. I'm the man. Yeah. Da, 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 da. What do you do all day long? Eh, oh, this, traffic. this is the guy right here. I forgot to show you this. So, yeah, we've got the first, oh. uh, we got a picture. We got a name. I'm pretty sure we can get a good search on and try to find this guy. Brothers. <laughs> can I confirm if your yes. father was in wherever this guy was born in nine months prior to that? So just throwing that out there. <laughs> uh, he does look like one of my brothers, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now I will say though, um, the internship. It, it, this wasn't a one and done for Tyler. He is actually still a Nissan employee. He's actually working on Nissan's human factors and ergonomics engineer. So props for for Tyler for still being part of the Nissan family. I'm pretty sure we can find him somewhere. We got some buddies in uh, in in Tennessee, so maybe we can find this guy easier well, than we let's think. Let's call it what it is. It's not going to be hard to find a Schmukowski. You know, I mean, <laughs> a, that is a uh, hockey jersey label right there. So we should be able to find him pretty easily. So yeah, 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 yeah. But if, but if we do, we got to get mm -hmm. this guy to like a convention, or we got to get him on. I mean, yeah. Uh, that guy's awesome. So That's thank cool, you man. to his sacrifices. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, uh, got us all the new technology that's rolling out. And he kind of got a chance to test it out before anything. So that'd be kind of interesting to see what he had to say about it. So Exactly, exactly. Uh, um, so from you guys on Facebook, uh, comments wow. here. We did have a few comments regarding this article. We're looking at what Ion has to say here. What? They missed Austin. Austin traffic's pretty bad. That would have been a good uh, resource to get some some good information. Personally, I dread going through Austin. I don't know about you. Are we doing? Are we already turning into old people? We're going to talk about whose traffic's worse. So <laughs> okay, we'll stop from here. <laughs> <laughs> who's in more pain from a prior surgery? Whose back hurts worse? It's just like, oh my god, we're not there yet. That's that's a conversation for our sixties. So, but yeah, last thing, but good point. last thing my dad says that you can't prove that's his Ill illegitimate son. There's no proof. Yeah, it's got a paternity <laughs> test. I'm sure we can figure that out. You are the father, right? <laughs> oh, Miles, man, that's that's nuts, dude. <laughs> All right, moving along. What else we got to go over today, buddy? Moving on. So that is our news segment here. We want to move on into motorsports, Miles. Ooh, and motorsports. Uh, yeah. Now, typically we cover two or three main pillars of motorsport. This is essentially what we know Nissan officially funds. Uh, the first one being Super GT. And uh, you've got some information on that, right? Well, I've got some news, but some kind of sad information that uh, did come its way. Um, let me share, I'm sharing my screen. Mike, you want to hit me? I... Hit oh, yeah. All right, so Super GT uh, round three was set to be um, coming up here pretty soon. It was actually set up for the 29th and the 30th, but guess what? They're getting a um, uh, potentially a second wave of COVID that's hitting Japan right now. So on mm -hmm. May 11th, with what they call the priority preventative measures in Japan, uh, puts uh, the city of Suzuka, the Mai prefecture, uh, due to the spread of COVID-19, they put it on lockdown. So they're going to come up with an alternative schedule, which we announced after close of observation days right now. So right now they do not, haven't released any data on this. Um, they're just kind of going to let us know what's going to happen next. Right now, the next, if they don't fill in the gap for this round three Suzuka, they might have to push it and, and call that a wash. Okay. And have to push it for round four, which isn't going to be a Moteji. Uh, that is going to be July 17th. Um, so if we uh, have any news, uh, July 17th and 18th. So if we have any news, obviously we'll have a couple episodes before then. We'll definitely keep you folks abreast of what's happening in there. And uh, we'll go from there. Thanks. 
Awesome, man. Awesome. So, uh, not exactly a race. It, it was canceled. So, uh, uh, we'll, we'll go call ahead it and... a rain day, right? A rain of yeah. sadness. So. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> bound to happen. Did yeah. you cue the sound the sound effect? I don't have any here, but I would go. Oh, you wanted that? Okay. Well, let me see. Yeah, one... The closest thing I got for you. I'm playing the world's smallest fiddle, or what was it called? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what I have here is a Formula E. Of course, we're talking about Nissan's uh, E-Dams team uh, having to do with uh, Formula E. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to let this video here play in the background while we go ahead and talk uh, about it. Yeah. Let's cue this up. I think we can get this going. There we go. So uh, in the, within the last two weeks, on May 8th, uh, the Formula E uh, season had their their time in Monaco, which is a very historic track. Obviously been part of F1 for a very, very long time. Formula E is no exception. Uh, it's a very beautiful track, though. This is not Formula E's first time being at Monaco. However... This is their first time. Oh, look at that accent. Look at that pile. Uh, Jesus it's Monaco, Christ. man. It's like it's it always going to be. Uh, it's street track. It's, yeah. it's yeah. a street. It, 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 these are all street tracks. I mean, Jesus. The, and, I mean, we've been watching this all season long. I mean, running over manholes and the whole car's gone. Yep. Left over by two feet. It's insane, man. So, but Monaco's yeah. no, uh, no different. It, it right. is a very trying track. A lot of difficulties. That is a famous choke point right there where a lot yep. of accidents happen uh, and this is we're going into our favorite stretch a little the chicane right there oh there it is oh, right there off yeah. the harbor yep well and that, that that's hard, a bit, right yeah, that, that's sorry. a big comment that a lot of racers and enthusiasts say especially about monaco because it is such a beautiful track and very historic track that's why it, it is as popular as it is but the car you know you got to think about it's been almost 100 years they've been racing on this street circuit the cars get faster and faster and faster being a street track, these streets don't change much. You know, you would, if it was a, a race course, the, the track may have gotten wider or they would have added a certain number of barriers or so, something to make things more um, uh, safer for, for drivers. But when it's a street track, you, your limits, your options are not as, uh, as, as plentiful. So, but uh, like I was saying earlier, this was actually the first time that Formula E actually used the same full track setup as Formula One. So that was one of the new uh, 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 wild cards, shall we say, about Ooh. about this this year's uh, race. Now, getting into uh, the uh, our Nissan drivers, uh, Sebastian Buemi and Oliver Rollins. Yeah. Uh, Buemi qualified 13th, finished in 11th. Rowland qualified 6th and finished 6th. Uh, he brought in uh, 8 points for the Nissan team. Uh, this was actually another thing too, is most of the formula E races lately have been a back to back, a double header, but, uh, but not this one. This was just one race, uh, that we can report on anyway. Uh, but for the season, Buemi is 22nd in the driver ranks. Uh, Rowland's doing better. He's in ninth and Nissan as a whole right now uh, is ninth, uh, as a constructor. So they're, they're, they're low on that totem pole right now. However, I do need to say that's. There's only a nine-point difference between Nissan and fifth place position right now. Only nine points. It's a very, very tight competition between the constructors right now. That's a weekend, right man. Now. That's a weekend. You know, all can change in a weekend. So, it really yeah. can. It really can. So I, I would say that, of course, uh, Nissan was second last year. Don't count them out of the race just yet as a constructor for this year. I, I, I mean – whether they're on the podium this year as a constructor remains to be seen, but I, I feel like they still have a very, very strong chance of being able to redeem themselves here. Uh, we talked about the bad luck they've been having uh, within the first uh, six rounds here. They can definitely have time to redeem themselves, uh, perhaps can come in as what they call the best of the rest. I really think that Nissan definitely has that chance to do so. Uh, this was, again, um, oh, I think this is uh, round seven, I believe. So there are... Uh, a few more left here, two more tracks. The next one is going to be in, uh, where is it out here? June 19th and June 20th. They're going to be racing round eights and round nine in Puebla, Mexico. 
that's coming up uh, later in a month from now. And then later on, the final races, the final two rounds are actually happening in New York City, the streets of New York, which to me, that sounds pretty exciting. I mean, this is I think that's the only U.S. Uh, course for this season uh, in Formula E. They're racing through Brooklyn, to be specific. So Damn, I hope they're going to have uh, wheels in the cars when they uh, when they get them all back, you know, before the, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, I, w- I will say, though. Just to let you know a little bit more about this race. Sorry, my Brooklyn folk. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you a little bit more about this race uh, for Nissan, uh, not as a, not as eventful as the last races were. Uh, again, uh, Buemi and Rowland were pretty much middle the middle of the field. The good thing is, is that they both finished this <laughs> this race, uh, it, it, and they weren't disqualified. If you remember the last uh, uh, round five, Rowland essentially finished. Uh, second place, but he was disqualified because was, of a. I was energy. just about to go into that. I was like, "Hey, he didn't get any. He didn't get any deductions. He didn't get slap on the hands with anything. I'll take it. You know why not, right? So, and exactly. again, this is a very this is a very new uh, portion of the sport. Uh, it's very innovative. A lot of things going on. I I mean, it's always been changes every year. You know, there's always been something that's been a degree of technology that's changed and evolved this uh, this series. So you and I have been following it since probably since last season. I was probably following like just at the tail end. And, um, I, you know, I've been nothing but impressed, um, you know, with uh, with their with their performance, it takes a lot to perform at that level um, with that series. So I uh, wish them the best, and uh, we'll continue to monitor them and watch them as we move forward. So same here, cool. man. Same here. Good. Speaking of that, uh, we yeah. got uh, you and I have been talking about something for a while. So yep. uh, we've been super excited about this. Originally, it started off kind of as a as a, a series that we were like, oh, that's cool that they did that. And then all of a sudden, while we were monitoring it, it just began to evolve into something uh, else. Yep. Um, so this is, we're talking, of course, about the uh, the new Nissan Sentra Cup race. Um, let me see here. Mike, boom. We set you up. There you go. Look at that. So <laughs> the dates for the 2021 Nissan Sentra Cup race schedule have been released. Again, this is a Canada-based cup. Um, and uh, starting on the dates in June, June 25th and 27th. And this is running all the way up until September. We're looking at six rounds. So we're going to see how this goes. Um, the Micro Cup Series was actually a huge success. Um, with a lot of participation as far as teams are concerned. Um, these, uh, this looks like it's going to be a really interesting series. Um, I'm, Nissan's getting behind it, but I'm assuming that as this starts to take off, I really think there's going to be a lot of movement, push, uh, push behind it. I'm hoping that they start really getting behind it. And if we can get this uh, Centra Cup you know, really – well established who knows maybe we can get some other things uh blossoming from it like you start getting back into spec z stuff um yeah. get, start getting back into all that i mean it, it's one of those kind of years for nissan right so it, it, for all um auto manufacturers so mm-hmm. to ask them to give a little bit more other than what they normally do like we're seeing in gt which is and formula e which is why you and i talk about it so much yeah. but um, you know, I'll take what I can get at this point. So I'm pretty happy that this Nissan Sentra Cup race is coming along. You and I are obviously going to cover this as we continue to move forward with the uh, um, with the episodes and move uh, in the upcoming future. So yep. again, kudos to all those teams that are scrambling in garages, no doubt, right now to get all their <laughs> together to make that happen. And it is a lot of teams altogether. I don't have the count right now, but if it's anything indicative of what was happening with the um, with the micro cups, um, that mm-hmm. was a lot of teams, a lot of competition going toe to toe on an equal platform. So kudos to them and, uh, wish they all, uh, kudos to them and congratulations to them before they even begin for getting through the door on that stuff. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> you just have those things queued up. Don't you, man? Uh, I'm ready to party. That's it. Ready to party, man. No. <laughs> Uh, real quick from you guys on Facebook. Uh, let's see if we got, the, can we get, yeah, we have the whole comment there from Neil in regards to uh, Nissan and the grassroots uh, amateur racing. He says here that uh, he's part of the uh, amateur racing says that Nissan has some of the 
the better uh, payout programs. Uh, that's what he says here. The best payout in amateur racing, uh, better than OEM. So that's uh, any other OEM, I should say. So Nissan, yeah, you got to give, give us some. Yeah, give us some coverage, man. Give us some. Give us something to chew on. Give us some links, baby. I need. I need more. I need to get into your world. I need to find out what's going on. All right. We always want to know what's happening with Nissan, especially if it's a Nissan team. If you're backed, anything, we want to know about it because we're here to promote it. So you let us know, Neil. Thank you again for fighting the good fight and uh, being part of um, of uh, making the brand that much <sighs> shinier. <laughs> everything you do same so. here man i'm not sure if you've started your uh your racing season just yet but if you have or if you are soon uh, uh good luck best of luck to you man and we're gonna make you an official uh nerd there you go you got a stamp there what do you got <laughs> no i just i gave him a nerd salute nerd! <laughs> 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 Awesome, right. awesome, man. So that is our motorsports segment. I think we've covered everything uh, there, Well, Miles. we covered everything that we got to do. We have a very special guest with us today, a good friend of mine and yours, yep. and um, uh, our good friend, Josh. So let's bring him on. Let's go on, go on here. Josh, are you there? Adding you in. Yo, what's hey. happening? Hey. hey. Anytime we bring somebody on, I'm always like, just is going to be eating or something. And he's like, yeah, I'll tell you what, that guy could stick it in his blah, blah. And it's, oh, I can help. <laughs> <laughs> it could have gone anywhere, Josh. It could have gone anywhere. So, no, I'm just glad you're with as ready. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, man. Glad, glad you can make it. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Glad to be here. Of course, man. Of course. <laughs> um, go ahead, Miles. No, I already know you guys. See, the problem that when you interview somebody that you know already, you oh. know that you tricky bastards are going to have something. You, you're you going to come at me some kind of sideways. I'm on defense right now. Come on. Let's see what you got. Are you really? Oh, okay. okay. Well, yeah, I never get – go, go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get started. What I wanted to start off with, with Josh, was I was trying to think about the first time that I, I met you. And we were talking about it just earlier. By the way, we were having a ball just before this uh, show started, just talking about you know random stories and things like that, though. But when I first met you, we were talking. Uh, I was actually doing ZCon in Atlanta, 2018, and uh, we were just getting close enough to the start of, of that that whole week, and we uh, started getting more involved with you because you ran ZCon 2019. Uh, also in Branson, Missouri, in coordination with Branson Z Fest, which is exactly why you're here. We wanted to have you talk more about Branson Z Fest here pretty uh, shortly, I should say, though. But um, I, I know you guys had a, a great time in Atlanta. Uh, I, I enjoyed working with you. I think the, the thing I was thinking about the most is that with, at least getting into ZCon, there's always that ceremony when you pass that big trophy. It's been around forever. From one team to the next? Uh, the something cup. Oh, I got it. I, I have a really s weird story about that, but I'll leave it off. Okay. But yeah, I know what you mean. So. If, you, if it goes back to you, you definitely mention it, though. But No, I know the story. I just thought <laughs> yeah. if I want to mention it because it's a little embarrassing. I forgot oh. it was like a cake cup or something like that. But it's mentioned after a guy who had that cup for a really long time. Yes. And he ended up passing away. What was that? You Mike know it. Brady. Yeah, that's yep. uh, that's it. And he he ended up passing away a number of years ago, and um, um, I I heard a very um, uh, heartfelt speech about it. But the story, yeah, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll just tell you the story. So unfortunately, in one of our nights out, um, our table got a little too uh, sideways that night, okay. and so half the table was a little. Um, uh, hung over if you will and then they started talking about the cup and the importance of the cup and and it's a very it, it's a very heartfelt moment and one of my people decided that was at my table decided to wake up and they're like yeah woo and the whole place just went silent and i oh. uh, i myself wanted to crawl underneath the table which doesn't happen a lot but uh yeah, <laughs> so, yeah i remember that story yeah 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 what the, the yeah. story that i remember What's, what's that? A little embarrassing. A little embarrassing, but go ahead. Yeah. The story that I remember, though, at least, is that at the end of the Atlanta Z-Con, it's the, the, the closing ceremony, and it's that, that moment in the show where you physically hand off that trophy from the Atlanta team to the Branson team. And 
you know, every, it's a packed room, and not only do we hand off the, the trophy, but the, the teams kind of shake hands and say, you know, congrats, good, good luck, and things like that. But uh, I think myself, I may have said, you know, good luck. You know, I was – I don't remember. I was so gone by then. But but I do remember what my buddy said. I'm not sure if you remember this, uh, Josh. My buddy Kevin Kevin from the Georgia Z Club, he, uh, he says he, he shook your hand. And he leaned in real close to you and just said, like behind your ear, and just said, "Sucker." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think when we handed ours off. We went, "Run, just run." <laughs> just <laughs> well, whenever Mike handed me the trophy, you could just tell. I mean, he was absolutely worn out, and he just kind of like, "All right, well." Was it shaking? Up. Yeah, he's he was ready to get rid of that thing, and I'll never forget the look on his face. And we were talking about it earlier. And I remember when I was in Austin's Econ, it was my first one. And I remember seeing Dennis Whittakin at the Lake Travis at the car show. And he had that same look that Mike had. And he was sitting up there and like just worn out. And I was like, man, what's up with this guy? Like he's beat. And then I saw Mike in Atlanta and I was like, all right, well, he's got that same look. And, you know, I remember the point in time in Branson's Econ. I was sitting with Chris Carl and we were going over the budget I had like 45 minutes of sleep. I was, I was delirious essentially. And I remember that feeling and I was like, man, I know I got Mike and Dennis's look right now. I'm just shot and I'll never forget that feeling. Well, again, kudos to, you know, for you, for, for hosting an event back in those days, you know, at, uh, hosting a Z-Con, anyone who's had to throw events together. I mean, me and Mike have thrown our, Fair share of events. Um, you know, Ion, who's on with us here today, too, as well. Yep. He worked his tail off in Austin Zcom when they put it together, Dennis. I mean, and it's not just one or two people for anybody who's ever done it. You've got a few pinnacle or few lead people that kind of take take on everything and organize the 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 overall picture, but the amount of people and volunteers that it takes to get this thing done, we could spend an hour talking about how many names we could name of people that put that stuff together. But again, I just wanted to take a moment and give kudos to not only Josh, his team, um, just like Mike and his team, uh, my team, they're all right. I'm just kidding. No, they know I love them. I <laughs> but again, um, all those people who have been volunteers that have helped to put together a Z-Con, um, any other uh, event like Z-Days, Branson. But here, we, we're here to talk to you today about um, yes. something that's near and dear to your heart, Branson Z-Fest, right? Yes, we are. Yeah. We are. Uh, just real quick, for those of you... My- Josh, you've got some love from the Facebook crowd here. We got a oh, Kate, Kate coming in he here. Oh, me five dollars. Kate owes me five dollars. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Another one here from James saying, "My man, Jimmy Roar." Yes, oh yeah, oh yeah. So absolutely, of course. Just like Miles said, though, we are here to talk about Branson Z Fest. This is an event that, sadly, I have not gone to. Just not yet. Uh, I plan to. Miles, I think you're the same way. Uh, we're we're, we're uh, we're, we're, we're virgins yeah, we, to the, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, we have not made this yet. So, however, <laughs> however, that brings up a really good time for us to actually talk about Branson Z Fest. It's and just the history. I, I just want to know, uh, you know, a few things. One is, you know, how long has Branson Z Fest been been a thing? How long has it been been going on? So it's funny you ask that because we had a, a huge discussion on our Branson Z Fest Facebook page and. There was guys that were saying it was 05, it was 02, 04, and it was all across the board. And we had a, a bunch of different you know, documents and, and old mail or like letters that guys had put together from, I think it was like the Kansas City group back in the day. And I think we ended up landing on, it was officially in 03 was the first one. Okay. And it started out, it was just a couple day event. So guys from Kansas City area and I think just the general Midwest that would come down to Branson, hang out for a couple di- a couple days, enjoy the the roads, and you know head back home. So it started out pretty low key and and not as a, a big event. Just got more bigger and bigger uh, attendance and, and more days because I think this year Branson Z Fest is a five day event. Is that right? So it's a five day event now. Oh, you tricky bastards. <laughs> We're gonna have something. You, you're gonna come at me. Oh some my god! Sideways. Days enjoy the the roads and a five day events. Is that right? 
So it's a five day event now. Oh, you tricky bastards. Oh, okay. Miles, is that you, Miles? What happened there? It is. Oh it's me. It's me. Yeah, Somebody sent me something. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Sorry about that, Josh. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, you're good. Yeah, so yeah. it's a five day event now. Oh, you tricky bastards. <laughs> there you go, Miles. Yeah, somebody sent me a worm. Leave, leave, leave it to Miles. Oh. Oh, all right, sorry. all right. Sorry about oh, you're that. good. Yeah. So, so you're right now. Is it still going, Miles? <laughs> yeah. I guess it is. Go, I guess Miles. it is. Yeah. Yeah, somebody yeah, sent me a worm. Leave, leave, leave it to Miles. Oh. All right. There you go. All right, all right, cool. We're good. We're good. Somebody sent me a, a link, and they were like, it, it just mirrored me, Josh. Sorry. I didn't mean to take away from you. My apologies. Okay, just add a little character to the video. That's all. I, yeah. You know, I don't have a team behind me to do any of this stuff. It's very grassroots, just like your event. And we're moving back. Into it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, I know, like you said, it, it over the last, uh, what is that, 2003 to now, so that's uh, that's uh, 18 years on its own. Uh Give yeah. or take. I know there's been a, like you said, COVID. I know last year wasn't really a thing, but uh, you've added, you've added more days since then. And the attendance has also grown. What, what's, uh, what's it, what's it up to these days? So this year we're looking at, we're hoping for, you know, a hundred, 120, well, 125 plus this year. And we really want to grow those numbers every year. And um, right now we're sitting at about a hundred. So it's, you know, a phenomenal turnaround. We took this event over as Ozark Z Club in 2019. So since then, we've had Branson Z Fest. Last year, COVID kind of got in the way. Um, we did two unofficial get-togethers. Mm -hmm. We still had great turnouts in May and October. And we basically just cruised and we cooked out in the parking lot. We had 50, 60 guys, you know, both both times. And, uh, you know, we kind of put our, our, our ideas together. We talked to the Texas guys and some of the guys that are more experienced that come in to Branson Z Fest every year. And we're like, okay, what do we want to do to make this better? Let's grow the community. Um, you know, there's not other regional events within our area. We really want to grow it and, you know, get, get it expanded out into the community more so. So that was really our, our kind of point of view as far as how we wanted to approach it this year and, and moving forward. But yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome, man. Uh, you said the cruise; it, it all started with like a cruise, yeah, and it, it's grown from there. I mean, uh, obviously, five days. What what kind of events are actually happening uh, inside those five days? Uh, what what else are y'all doing? So it's really like cruise centralized. So we'll have majority of the week will be you know focus on cruises. Um, during the night, everyone comes back to the hotel, hangs out. We'll have music playing. Um, you know, everyone's got a drink in their hand, just chilling out, relaxing, you know how it is. And yep. it's, uh, it's a really cool atmosphere. I mean, you got guys that are almost 80, you got guys that are almost 80 and you got, you know, some of the younger guys that are, you know, in their early twenties. So it's all across the board. Um, we got a group photo, we got a cornhole tournament, um, karaoke, which I heard Dennis Winnikin is calling out Cade Mertens on this, uh, this carry oh, so really yeah yeah he's gonna wear a mount fuji so that's, that's <laughs> bringing out japan there is a karaoke yeah. competition yeah, yeah the uh dennis whittakin is legend for wearing a, a mount fuji uh mountain co cosplay costume that he just rocks out and he just and he sings the entire time he knocks it out <laughs> <laughs> he kills it, dude. <laughs> so, wow. But I've, I've wow. Uh, personally witnessed it in Japan, and it is, it's kind of legend. So, yeah, it's pretty It is. Nice. Yeah. K doesn't know what he's getting into with that, but yeah, the karaoke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't, don't, bring a, don't bring a knife to a gunfight there, Caden. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know, our, man. I think that there, need, there definitely needs to be cameras uh, recording uh, when, that, when that showdown happens. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely make sure that happens. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to uh, make sure that that gets on the internet for uh, forever, so uh, so we get it. And make sure that it's uh, locked <laughs> in, and maybe it'll be the the legendary thing that separates uh, Branson. Yeah, so. man. I'll tell you what, that dang old internet, man. You just go on there and point and click, 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 click. It's real easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a pretty full event, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we got we got our People's Choice Car Show at the end of the 
the week. It's on Saturday. But next year, we're really excited. There's a really nice track that's coming in at Lake of the Ozarks. Um, so it's something that we're going to try and include for our event next year. But okay. it's, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty legit track. So kind of seeing uh, seeing what that's going to offer this summer and try and go up there and test it out. So hopefully we so you guys are gonna go, uh, you're actually going to do a track day at this event? That's what we're planning on for next year, not this year. The track at Lake of the Ozarks, it won't be ready until probably late in the fall. So, yeah, But still to have an event at your location, man, that's pretty legit. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. So, I, yeah. I think that opening up a track day to not only your event, but almost any event, that is going to really shoot y'all up through you know the next level in terms that's of attendance big- because you – of course, in the Nissan world, there are a tons of track junkies that are wanting to get their hands on, a, especially a new track. That just It's all the more reason to come see you guys. So that's that's awesome, man. That's a big, that's a big player game right there. Good job. Are, so. By the way, aren't, aren't you a, a, a track enthusiast yourself? I am. Yeah, I try and get out there when I can and not blow up my cars, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> blow up my knees, I should say. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And so you said, obviously, Branson started back in 03. Uh, you're now, uh, you said Ozark Z Club is, is kind of taking it over, this this new guard per se. But uh, when did you discover Branson Z Club? I'm oh, sorry, Branson Z Fest. Uh, what, how, how did this all start for you? So it all ties in 2014. I didn't know anyone. Um, I just moved up to Springfield, got out of high school, and I was, uh, you know, looking around trying to meet some Z friends. And uh, Matt Knopp actually stopped me at a at a gas station in Springfield. It's he's one of our event coordinators, planners for Branson Z Fest now. And he was uh, he's like, hey, you need to come, you know, hang out at Branson Z Fest. I was like, okay, cool. When is it? So I ended up going down to Branson Z Fest and had no idea what I was getting myself into. Long story <laughs> short, my first time down there, I end up parking next to the silver 350Z and this guy comes over, chain smoking, all sweaty, wearing this Nissan shirt with all these different emblems on it. And I was like, who's this guy? So he ends up talking to me for probably three hours and uh, the entirety of the car show. And I was like, all right, well, this guy's got a lot of stories. He's either, you know, been around a little bit or he's he's a little, you know, off there. So I had one of the Oklahoma well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. members come up to me. And they're like, hey, do you know who you're talking to? I said, I have no idea. And they handed me a magazine, a ZCCM magazine with Mad Mike on it. And they're like, here, you need to read this and go get his autograph. And I was like, okay. So <laughs> after Z Fest, Mad Mike and I kept in touch over the summer. So a couple months had went by. And he called me and he's like, hey, Josh, it's like you need to start a club in Springfield. That's actually a pretty good uh, Mad Mike impersonation. Do it again. Hey, Josh. I don't think I can now. <laughs> Just, <laughs> that was a pretty good, actually, of all things. Josh, get over here. Yeah. You start a club. No, that's that's kind of how it goes. And then hold on. Josh, you need to start a Z club. All right. I got to go. <laughs> go yell at somebody else. <laughs> Just... <laughs> so he called me up, and I think he started off, you know, like, hey, guy, or something. And I was like, hey, you know, and he was, uh, kind of coached me through it. He's like, you need to, uh, you need to get these guys around it up. You have a, a decent audience in your area. I said, okay, well, might as well. I got a Z car, you know, I'm, I'm down to organize some events. Well, little did I know what I was getting myself into, you know, started the club that fall and then, uh, you know, kept in touch with Mad Mike club grew, you know, and just kind of went from there and we're, you know, for our area, we're about 60 members deep and just continues yeah. continues to grow each year. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. The rest is history yeah. at that point. Yeah, yeah. That's Long great, time, man. man. Congratulations, dude. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, Mad, Mike, Mad Mike had it all planned out, though, because he, like, targeted me. I started the club the next year at Z-Fest. He's like, hey, you need to go to Japan and yeah. went to Japan and he pulled us off to this little side alley with Tetsu and Chris Carl. And he's like, hey, you need to ho- host a Z-Con. And that's where that went from there. <laughs> so it was like, 
<laughs> progression stages. Yeah. So. I, I kind of had a similar situation like that, of course, with Mad Mike and, uh, and even Chris Carl, the, the gang there where um, I uh, – Oh, what was it? Uh, it was Econ was one of them. And like you said, it you said you were at a, some shady uh, place with drinks in your hand. That's exactly where I was, too. And uh, it's just like, hey, uh, go ahead. and uh, it, uh, First round's on us, you know. <laughs> and then they and then they dish out what they uh, what they're thinking, you know, and I was on board. Yeah, obviously you were on board and it's it's done a lot for the community, you know, so uh, that takes a lot, though, to go from finding an event to starting uh, your own Z club to then essentially running the event, being in charge of that events and then moving on to Z con. Uh, dude, you, you've been busy. <laughs> I have, man. I remember miles coaching me up and it's funny, the progression, like I was so shy and quiet and like having to talk in front of a crowd, like terrified me. And now, I mean, get a little nervous, yeah. but it's whatever. And we were down in Atlanta at your convention and miles somehow ended up in my room before I went on stage at Zcon, you know, where you do the, the presentation before your event, you know, at the year before. And uh, Miles is like, oh, it's okay. It's only like a thousand people. You just go up there and talk. And I was like, oh, well, okay. It sounds like, and you're just like all frozen in silence. My name is Jeff. <laughs> just you got nothing going on. Yeah. I go up and get on stage and it's like, I don't know what to say. And Mauricio from the Canadian group, they're like, yeah, go Josh. And I was just, I was like, all right, I can do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think what's different, it, it's different when you're in front of your friends. It's there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's moments where like, okay, imagine everybody in their underwear, but it's like, it's my friends in their underwear. So it really doesn't make that much of a difference. So what odds are you probably have already. So, it, <laughs> and I've seen them all in their underwear. It's Branson. It's Z day. It's all, yeah. yeah. Somewhere down the line, you've seen your yeah, Z friends in their underwear. Yeah. So. And the thing is you all want the same thing. So it's kind of nice. You're, t you're definitely talking to a captive audience and, and we're all nerds. You know, I, I don't care if you're a Nissan nerd and your overall brand, if you're Nissan infinity dots and nerd and your it's overall brand, but it's Zcon it's nerd to like the nth degree. And it's just like, you know, uh, I can't, uh, I can't say enough about the captive audience and the people that kind of get stuff done every year at Zcon. Again, they're there we are at home with them when we say nerds so kudos <laughs> to them so yeah um i, I do know that uh, it, it takes it takes a village it takes a team to, to pull these things off not only from the club to the event to a z-con it, it, it's it's not just a one man job. There's obviously dozens, uh, hundreds almost uh, of teams of, of teams of villages, if you will. Yeah, I I, I just want to give you guys a shout. Out. I know we got a lot of your buddies here online, but I mean, any type of shout yeah, out actually, to your to your, we got some your friends or right now, yeah, your, yeah, your your teammates, yeah. yeah hey, well, he's got a whole I'm... fan base that's following him today on comments. Let's uh, let's holler at him real quick. Well, let's sure. go back to even 2019, man. Like. Brittany and I were the only two out of our team that had ever been to a Z-Con. We had a couple guys that weren't even 21 yet. Um, everyone else had never even – yeah, they didn't even know what to expect. So our core team was about eight people, and you guys know – yeah. So mm -hmm. we, we strung that together, and that team was phenomenal. I mean, whatever we needed, it was done. And, you know, this year, Branson Z-Fest team, um, I got Matt Knopp. Cade Mertens, Abe Alani, Dalton Brown, and our Texan, Mike Bruner. <laughs> Mike's kind of our liaison. He kind of gives us little pointers and, you know, keeps us, keeps us on path with the, the tradition. But yeah, man, it's a, it's a great group of guys. I'm thankful to have so many like-minded Z enthusiasts where we can ping ideas off each other, message each other two in the morning, like, Hey, I got this idea. Let's do it. Or what it might be. Um, yeah, it's just a really, really cool team. That's awesome, man. Here, you're getting some love here from from Jeff. Here, man, his, he lives to be awake. He doesn't sleep. The yeah. man doesn't sleep. I run on a low sleep basis. I like to stay busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, definitely got a lot of friends, man. I, I'm glad you were able to give him a shout out too. Like I said, it, it really is a village, man. It, it, it takes a real team to get the pull off on events, much less like Branson Z Fest or, or even like a Z Con. Um, 
I was going to say, uh, so 2021 is here, and what's uh, you want to just talk us through what's happening this year? You're, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. So as far as econ? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Branson Z Fest. So I know y'all are two weeks away, uh, June 2nd through June 6th. Uh, I've, I'll share a map. I actually wanted to do this for you yeah. too. For those, for those of you that are that are live streaming with us that don't know where Branson Z Fest is actually taking place, I went ahead and I'm zooming in here. So if you see the United States in Missouri, just off of the uh, Arkansas border, is, is that right? Just making sure it is Branson, right? Yeah, and guys, we have some of the best roads in in North America, and it really gets kind of shadowed. I know Z Days has Tale of the Dragon, and that you can't rival that. But really, the area in Branson, I mean, there's low traffic. You don't have to worry about cops. Um, you can kind of kick it up a little bit and cruise how you how you want with your friends. And I mean, you can go down any side road. One Highway 125 is is what we're known for. It's 125. Uh, it's about a four hour round trip drive. It's phenomenal. But outside of that, you could take a, a wrong turn and still end up down some beautiful scenery and you might end up, you know, taking some pictures down there or whatever it might be. But just the whole area is, is gorgeous and it really makes for some awesome, awesome driving. Yep. That's great. Um, I do have here. Yeah, uh, I did have your, your, your Branson Z Fest website here which i'll share and yeah so i mean anything specifically about this year that you'd want to share at all the entirety of the event everything we've tried to keep all back kind of the the camaraderie and how branson's e-fest was established we really wanted to keep that as our you know our focus and really all we've done is tried to upgrade you know the events and and just the the structure so as far as you know, Branson Z Fest as a whole, it's a family gathering. Like I said, we got guys from all across the country that are coming in all ages and everyone's just there to have a good time. And we have, you know, we'll have newbies. We'll have guys that have been there the entirety since 03. And it's a, uh, it's a lot of fun. That's yeah. Awesome. You know, I've, I, I remember seeing you guys come out in some of the Nissan sport and the ZCCM magazines. Art Singer was a huge uh, promoter of the event um, for a number of years. And he would always tell me that cause he was sort of my boss for a while. And he was just, he's like, man, you got to make it out there. And this was a number of years ago. And it just seems like with the new team, there's a new revitalization, some fresh blood that's sort of new ideas that are being put into it. So kudos to you guys for really trying to, uh, to, um, to uh, escalate that event or, and, and evolve it to uh, what it needs to be. So yeah, congratulations. Well, and I wouldn't be in the community where I am without mad Mike and, not that, you know, anyone's trying to do that, but we're really trying to reach out to guys that might not have been to Z Fest or, you know, might not have Z friends. It's like, hey, come out here. There is a whole community, a whole family, even outside of BZF that you can be a part of every year. You know, so we're really just trying to grow, you know, the younger community, get these guys involved and, and pull them around the country with us. That's How did true. You, Mike Bruner. Now, I'm not. You said young guys. My apologies. Mike is, is. Uh, I think he went to school with Moses. So, <laughs> but, but how did you get Mike Bruner, a local Texan, to uh, to jump ship to switch sides? So Mike Bruner is actually an Ozark Sea Club member. But whenever we, uh, well, I, I, are you taking the money from anybody at this point? Is that what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so whenever. Uh, it was probably oh, it was probably 2016, maybe 17. Um, I'd walk by. There's a, uh, it's, it's the little whiskey room with the Texas guys. You know, they they have their their little gatherings where they're sipping on their whiskeys and bourbons and. Uh, I call I call it the room. You have a 50 50 shot, 50 50 chance of, of walking out of. Well, so yeah, these guys <laughs> bourbonistas. That's their yes, bourbonistas. Room. Oh my god, and, I can't. Uh, there's not a lot of guys that I cannot keep up with. Yeah. The, so, those boys party hard. And I walked by their room one night and they had their door cracked just a little bit. And I heard, Hey, come in here. Kind of looked in and is Warren Klein. And it's like, Hey, come in. We want to talk to you. I was like, <laughs> okay. So I walked in and I didn't even say anything. I just walked in and it's like, here you go. Handed me this drink. I was like, all right, well, so, hang, out. <laughs> hang out a little bit. So, <laughs> I had already known him from going to Japan with these guys. And uh, it was Mike Kwan who, man, missed Mike I miss Kwan. Him. I miss him all the time, dude. Yep. I love Mike, Mike Kwan. Kwan. 
uh, Bob Bossy, Warren, and Mike Bruner. Legend. Yeah. And uh, Warren, they, just kinda, they took me under their wing and just instilled uh, <laughs> some, some life lessons and great conversations. Man. And I'll, they, they, made you into a, they made you into a, what we call a prospect, Josh. All right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's, it's crazy because I remember the stories like with Mike Kwan, like, you know, just saying like, hey, love life, literally enjoy every day. And just little stories like that, like, I don't even know what year it was, but I just remember him, you know, looking me straight in the face and saying, man, enjoy every single day. Enjoy the people you're with. Enjoy the Z cars. And just little things like that sneaking off where, you know, maybe I could have went and done something outside with the other guys or had a couple, well, you know, whatever, went on a cruise. But just taking that time and, and really getting to talk to these these guys and let them take me under their wing and, you know, learn these life lessons, man, I'll, I'll always be grateful for it. There's, there's a lot of people that I, um, you know, whenever I'm like, should I go or should I not go kind of thing? Like there's, there's a lot of people in the Z community and, and not to disparage anybody or, or take light away from anybody else. But with Kwani, like, I'm always like, like, what would Kwani do, man? Like he would just say F it and get in the car and just roll. And it's just, and I, I love that about him. I love seeing him. He was always a happy face and I, I get a little choked up. You know, when I, when I, it's, you know, when I don't get a chance to see him, but I know exactly what you mean. And it's just like, that's one thing. It's that whole love life, love people of cars. You know, it's just like, it, there's some people that just lived it. And uh, he was one of those guys. And there's a lot of them, a lot of people that are out there like that. And hopefully somebody will say that about us, um, you know, in our latter yeah, years. Days, so. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's one thing you mentioned earlier too. You, uh, Josh, you mentioned about bringing in the younger crowd and just paying it forward. So it's because there's a reason why we're here and someone put in the work to, to allow us to find them or, or they found us. And so now it's a matter of paying, paying it forward too. So for anybody, anybody who's younger than us or whoever's new to the Z community, I should say, you, you said it earlier where events like this, like Branson Z Fest, it's almost like a family reunion and it's from people from all over the country and literally it, it, it opens you up to a whole network of, of just great people with, with you, you share common, you can buy parts off of them for one thing, you know, you can, and the cool part is like, let's say you're just on a trip and you need a couch to sleep on. You're passing through town, you know, with, with like the ZCCA and, you know, the people you meet at a Branson Z Fest, you're probably going to, you're probably going to know somebody in some of these major towns that you can literally just call up and say, Hey man, can I, can I crash on your couch and, uh, you know, take a warm shower? And then they're like, yeah, sure. No problem. Come on in. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome. Dude, it happens, man. It's like, I've seen it numerous times. I do it. Like I open up my house anytime and we've all done it. And that's when you're at that level. It's like people, I tell people that and they're like, nah, no way. I was like, yeah. That's how we roll. It's like, that's, that just has always been kind of ingrained in the Z world. And it's like, you know, we talk a lot about Z's and the Nissans, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're fans of Datsun's Affinity's Nissans, but the thing about it is we've experienced so much positivity on the Z front. And, you know, what we hope to do here with this podcast is, is excel that and, in and just bring everybody. It's all really one big family, but that's the beautiful thing about it that I, I can't express enough is that we'll get those situations that, uh, that we meet people and you meet lifelong friends. I mean, hell Josh, you and I went to, uh, Japan together. I think yep. you were, on our, uh, you were on our trip. I mean, they'll, um, you know, I, I, you and I are lifelong friends, you know, um, just based from that event. I mean, we, Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff went down in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of craziness. A lot of uh, Miami potato nights. Well, uh oh, <laughs> uh oh. We'll take, uh -oh. <laughs> we, Jesus Christ! Well, let, let's get up back on track for just a second here. <laughs> Mike's like, yeah. All right. yeah. he already knows where this is going. No, yep. no, no, no. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there, Miles. Just give us, give us a second here. I definitely want to. Before we get too crazy here, let's, I definitely want to let people know some more about Branson Z Fest. Just saying, like ah. you said, my, uh, great people. We got comments from from Mike saying, of course, carrying that tradition forward. That's definitely true, man. Thanks for, for commenting, Mike. Also, Jeff was saying here that Z community is best of the best groups of people ever, man. So we, we, we definitely got testament to that, man. Thanks for, for commenting, you guys. 
Um, getting into Branson Z Fest, well, just one more time here. How's is registration still open? Just by the way, yeah, registration still open. We kind of did a soft cut off on shirts, and that's going to end on the twenty second. Um, okay. We we're going to take guys at any time. So if, if you want to come in, you know, registration is going to be open. We're going to sign you up, come in, have fun. You know, it's, it's not like we're going to have a, you know, you know, you, you can't come in kind of deal. <laughs> yeah, we might be, we might be running, you know, we might be running low on, on shirts or whatever it might be at that point, but no, we, we want everyone to come in, get to experience it, meet mad Mike, you know, talk to, talk to everyone in the community and, and just have a good time. Awesome. <laughs> And also the hotel. Uh, I know typically there's a host hotel. Are, do y'all still have rooms available, or are there backup hotels uh, in the ranks for you guys? Or so we do have rooms rooms available. It's the Honeysuckle Inn in Branson. Um, Chris, call Chris up at the Honeysuckle. She's phenomenal. Uh, we okay. we literally had we had a fire pit going last September somehow in the corner of the hotel, and she come up on her go kart golf cart and. Uh, I was like, oh man, this is probably not going to be good. And she's like, oh, y'all having fun cooking marshmallows over there? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, we're having a blast, which I mean, we had safely away from everyone. But I mean, they're so accommodating. It's a, it's a phenomenal location. They really take care of us. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, now, uh, that was Branson Z Fest. Again, for you guys, again, June 2nd through the 6th, BransonZFest.org is where you can find more information. Uh, I've got the links here. Uh, of course, these comments down below. I, um, you are also taking part. Just to move on for just a second here, you are also being a part of ZCon happening in Colorado Springs, man. You're 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 you're, you're doing you're pulling double duty, man. Not only are you weeks away from this event in in Missouri, but you're also working on an event in Colorado. What's did you have anything you wanted to share about that? Yeah, so. Colorado, we got some really cool news that's getting ready to come out. And I know that's kind of vague, but if you guys, <laughs> it is. It is. But if you guys stay tuned, we have a couple really, really big announcements that's coming from a few sponsors um, that are participating at this year this year's event. Um, if you're not coming out, you should definitely come out. It's, uh, oh. it's going to be a very, very cool that's event. Big news for us. All right. Interesting. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm pretty excited now. All right. I won't I know how this goes, so we'll just kind of like, okay, we'll sit back and wait, but you never know. And next thing you know, bam, Morton's gonna be there. Bam, something else big is gonna come. So it's like, or the Z will be there. It's just like it's gonna be something big. I already know it. So and we do have a good lineup of, of guests coming out. We got uh BRE, Peter Brock's coming out. Uh, JDM Legends, Mad Mike's going to be out there, awesome. and uh, we also have a couple special guests that aren't announced yet either. Which uh, that's also on the back burner, and guys will catch wind of it. But it's it's going to be a stacked year. We're going to have a really can I do, it? Can cool I do another dun dun dun? I can do, do it. Another. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, the teaser will always kill you. Yeah, absolutely. The teaser man. will like, always kill you. So, absolutely, man. Um, <laughs> oh my God! So that that was Branson Z Fest. Uh, we definitely got that teaser out for ZCon. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, you guys online, you guys are killing me with the comments. They're great. Keep them coming. Um, we still got a, a few, we still got some more uh, content coming for you. Next segment we have here. Is it okay if I move on, guys? Anything else you guys want to share? Oh, please continue. All right. Yeah. I don't want to hold you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone's got to someone's got to crack the whip just a little, man. I don't want to, but uh, it keeps it going. <laughs> All We're right, going continue forward. on. We're anyway. running our normal time period where we go one fifteen, one thirty. So hit me, right. go. We're running good time here. So next thing is, uh, Miles. I know we always have a segment here with our when it, with every guest. We have a segment called Back Alley Chats. And this is where we get down and dirty, man. We start, we 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 uh, we let our hair down, man. We just uh, relax a little bit, maybe talk about hmm. something a little bit more uh, scandalous, more fun and exciting. Well, now, before you, that, go uh, ahead. Uh, but, but, you know, but, I, I love I, I love Josh like a brother. All right, so I'm gonna do something like any like any good brother. I've got to cause some kind of turmoil and some kind of unrest in his own personal life. So I'm just gonna throw the question out there. This is just one that I picked out of 
the old fishbowl, and it's like, what can you say about your car that you can't say about your significant other? And be nice, because I actually really like your significant other, so you better be nice. She's like right <laughs> over here too. She's just like, <laughs> just oh man, Jeff's there. Jeff's <laughs> there. Is Britt dun, there? Dun, dun. Is Britt? Oh. Yeah. She Come on, Britt. Stick your head in. Yeah, yeah get in there. there. Stick your head in. He's coming. Ooh, no pressure. No pressure, Josh. Hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mean to be instigators, but yeah. Well, I'm gonna just throw the question out again out there. Um, <laughs> What can you say about your car that you can't say about your significant other? No pressure that she's right there next to you, but go on. I mean, you know what? Forget it, Josh. You don't even answer the question. Okay. Britt, you answer the question. Okay. Go ahead. She's shaking her head no. Oh, okay. She's out. All right. She's out. Go on. I don't have a good answer. You don't have a good answer. Uh, yeah. You know what? You're going to plead the fifth, and I can respect that. All right. As, as, <laughs> <laughs> he wants to, he wants to is, stay that, involved. It's a, probably a good measure. We, so. we, we want to be able to see uh, Josh alive at, at ZCon. <laughs> and at, yeah. <laughs> Instead of a, a you know what? Black guy. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to give Josh a pass on this one, and Mike I'm going to give you a pass. I'm going to take a pass. We're going to skip back alley chat today. All together. No, no. Hey, I got one story. I got one. I got one. Yes. All right, go. So it's not, it really doesn't answer your question, but my black 350Z that I had, blue wheels, twin turbo, whatnot. So kind of to go alongside with Britt, she had a 335 BMW and I put a JB4 tune on it. So I thought it'd be fun to give her, you know, a race. So I let her take off and get like a five or six car head start. And I went blowing by and I was like, oh yeah, like, you know, I'm going to spin tires, go by super high speed, whatever. And, uh, yeah, I did that. And I ended up dry firing a piston. I blew my car up as I did it. And I was like, <laughs> so to this day, she holds that against me and says that she won the race. So I'm hoping with this new car, maybe, uh, you know, maybe we can get something that'll beat her. Are you talking uh, about Z Porto? Is that what you're hoping for? Man, when it comes out, I'd love to see one. I'm 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 already I have it on the wish list too as well. So it's on the wish list for sure. Absolutely. We'll see. Well, yeah. So now, before we move on here, dude, you would not believe the comments that just lit up after this back out of chat. <laughs> so <laughs> if it's they, not they us, trying to, they keep trying to pull him in and pull him in and get him in more yeah. trouble. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this couldn't be more. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, of course. This is definitely just lighthearted and have a bunch of fun with it. Uh, I will share a few comments just real quick. Uh, Kay does say, "Be nice to Mama Brit." That was one there. So just saying, be gentle, right? I think we did a good job here on that one. Uh, I we got a guy here, Justin Lucas, saying if uh, if you have a 370, 350Z, so it's the booty, because 350Z's booties are the biggest. I was like, all right, okay, I like that one. And I think, oh, <laughs> for me, it costs so much less. <laughs> Oh, 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 that's Neil. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, man. that is back alley chat here, Miles, for, for, for us. However, uh, there is something that uh, I think Josh and ourselves, we wanted to talk to you about. And back alley chat special edition, uh, <clears throat> there was mention of what was called Miami potato. There's a story there. Uh, I don't know what this is, so uh, it's a key. Is that like y'all like, safe word or something like that? Over, whenever game over. <laughs> Just, it, I'll let Josh explain it because he says he has a. What's crazy is when I met Josh, he couldn't even speak publicly. Now he just can't be quiet. So I'll let Josh tell his story. So we're in Japan. This is 2016, and if you've ever been on the Z Crazies trip, if you want to go, talk to Chris Carl first off. But if you've ever went. Every day is, it's insane. I, I can't put it into perspective unless you actually go. But we're on, Miles, where were we? Shinjuku, Shibuya, somewhere. And we were, we were going to this, this gas panic. And we ended up. We were, just, we were, we were bar hopping at that point. And oh. we ended up finding a place. And I have a, I don't know what it is. Like, I just exist in an underbelly of society. And I just kind of like, every time I see a bouncer, I'm like, 
because I was a bouncer at a time. I'm just like, you, you place good. All right, good. He goes, do you, and he's like, yeah. And he goes, so I walk in the door and he's just like, I was like, Hey man, I got nine. It was like, uh, can you make some happen? What do you got on special? What's the deal? Sell me, sell me, tell me. And, uh, he goes, I got, uh, all the Zimas that you can handle in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was a weird sell, but he was like, I got all the Zimas that you can handle in Japan. And, um, and it's like, and this party don't stop. And I was like, you know what? That's a pretty good sell. I was like, <laughs> Josh party crew. Boof, well, engage. We our bartender at that, that same bar that you're talking about, he was a British guy. And like, there was like American music playing and like, country and rap and all this different stuff and there is like a whole mixture of like different cultures in there and we're like what what is this bar and he looked at us and he's like it's whatever you want it to be (laughs) all right and he yeah and then we i i haven't drank so many zimas since like 1999 but on the bar and he's holding all these little baby zimas yeah yeah, they made little. They make baby zimas. Yeah, like, they make baby zimas. Yeah. The little baby zimas. <laughs> I must have drank. I don't know how many of those. And we were just dancing all night long. There was a whole clan of us. Yeah, we had a blast. I was popping and locking on fools. I was like, man, it was, it was awesome. <laughs> so we had a good, good time. And then we were trying to find a club that I I couldn't remember if it was called like Disco Potato or Miami Potato. So at this point. I'm drunk in Japan, walking the streets, yelling out, we got to find my or Miami potato. And it was just, it became a thing. And what's that? What's that square, that famous square that you can walk across? They, they filmed it in um, Fast and Furious 3, where they drifted through the section. Yeah, Chris just that, commented, it's Shibuya crossing. Yep. Shibuya, Shibuya crossing. and yeah. we got really drunk, and we start like, um, running through Shibuya, but going sideways, like, <laughs> and like and running through because the crosswalks live for like 60 seconds and then it shuts off. So we're just like that. And Josh is behind me. And so it was, it was pretty epically funny. I think and, that's where we lost John Farah at because like, uh, John disappeared yeah. and all of a sudden we're at this bar and it's in a basement. Like no one's seen Sean. And, don't know where he's at. And then we look around and there he is. Like no yeah. one talked to him. Sean Farah is Canadian. For those that don't know, uh, Sean Farah owns SPL. And so internally we call him Mople. Which Mople. Is we call him Mople. So that's like his, that's his gang name. So uh-huh. it's pretty funny. So the whole time we're in Japan yelling like Mople, where are you at? Mople? <laughs> We just look like the typical. Like you're not supposed to, in Japan. It's very you, you're always supposed to be very cordial and respectful. Oh gosh, on those buses. We we rides. added nothing oh. to the to the rating of how they see Americans. We, oh, we no. took that down. If anything, we ruined the spot. I we blew up the spot. My apologies to Japan for anybody <laughs> visiting Japan because I'm pretty sure we took it down a point. For respect for Americans oh. in this area, so yeah, we did it up. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's an awesome story, man. I, I, I can see, an, you know, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Yeah. A lot of crazy stories. Like every night was like insane. I've never drank so many highballs in my life um, that I have in Japan, and I don't even. I'd never had highballs. I don't think before I got to Japan. It was you remember- anyway. We yeah. We can oh, talk. We're yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, I know. We're just we're gonna have a lot of sad stories with a lot of sad outcomes. Well, yeah. God, Miles, <laughs> you're, you're, you're killing it with those sounds, though. You're doing really good with those, man. For for your first try, man, you're doing great, man. For a first time having those sound effects, that sounds pretty. I'm a ninja, good. black belt. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish I could have been with you guys. I know. Um, I, I also went to Japan. It was uh, about two years previous. Um, I think it. It sounds like maybe y'all's trip was the one to, to go on, man. So may, maybe I, I'm sure hopefully for, it, for all of us, it's not the uh, the only time we head to Japan. You know, it's, it's uh, what you make of it. Every trip's different. You know, Chris Carl, oh, those, those trips have been going on for a number of years. Chris Carl has adopted those these days. Yeah. And the, uh, the level of, um, 
of gratitude that I think you have after, after those events happen and the amount of work that has to go into those every year is crazy. I can't say enough about Chris Carl and, and Dennis and uh, Brad, those Brad, guys for yeah. having put all that stuff together every year. So uh, for those that don't know, if you haven't gone to a Z-Con, go to a Z-Con, buy Chris Carl a drink, you know, and, um, and kiss his, <laughs> kiss his butt all week. And he'll probably just end up inviting you to the craziest thing. And, um, but again, um, you know, if you get a chance to go on one of those events, uh, especially with Mad Mike, it's an amazing experience. Um, I am so, uh, glad that I had an opportunity to go with Josh and a number of other people. Mike D you had to go with a different crew, but regardless your experience. Is probably- oh, I had so, a great time. Yeah. Um, but again, um, thanks to everybody that makes that happen um, now that we're just kind of going off on a tangent about it. And it, you're just partying with a bunch of nerds the entire week, having a great experience. <laughs> so the entire week is a, just a, a nerddom of all that can be. So, yeah. Anyway, why are we talking about this still? <laughs> just why are we going it's, off? It, on- it's so memorable. That's why. It That's is, why. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I think we're getting near the end, aren't we? Well, we're at an hour and a half. I think we are, I mean, unless we're trying to do what's that Avengers cut that they added two hours onto <laughs> <laughs> the, the director's cut, something like the that. The director's yeah. cut. No, we are not doing that. That's done. Oh so. yeah. No. Um, of course, we want to we want to thank uh, Josh. Thank you for for um, being a part of this interview, and I hope you enjoyed your time with us. Uh, you know, had a, had a, I had a great time with you guys. So, <laughs> Hi guys, thank you. Looking forward to doing it again. This was a blast. Oh, good, yeah. man. Well, we try. We try to have a good experience, have a good time. You know, it's, we're all nerds. So it just, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, we, I was very excited to have you on the episode. You know, I was just uh, a, a, uh, a fellow nerd would be fine. So, yeah, I, I'm glad you came on. And, be a nerd. I'm not raising nerds. Same bro. here. Back again, nowhere in life. <laughs> so, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I got everything. Wow. So, yeah. But again, uh, going yeah. back to it, Branson Z Fest, June 2nd through the 6th, you mm-hmm. still got uh, registration open. You can show up day of. Hotel space still available? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. And uh, Chris Carl has been blowing up the internet the last like five days about Branson's EFS and selling it pretty hard. So kudos to him. Kudos to all the promoters out there. Again, um, if you get an opportunity and you can make some time, go to the event, support the community, um, see Josh out there, buy him a drink, highball. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got my water. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I uh, go on, Mike. You got something to say? Go on. Oh well, we definitely want to give a shout out before we just before we're out though. Also, want to give it a shout out to the community for those of you that are still uh, live streaming with us. Thank you for being a part of it. I hope you guys enjoyed y'all's time uh, with us. Uh, I think we had a record number of comments come in throughout this show so it really is a great sign i uh, really appreciate you, uh, those of you online being with us uh through social media uh, we hope you'll join us again uh, typically for if this is your first show uh our events uh our show here the nissan nerd podcast happens every two weeks um mm-hmm. that it's kind of like uh what would you call it it's not a, on an exact day we typically it's like the joe rogan thing we kind of do it uh, wh- whenever we, we get out, feel of like it. Typically, so, it's every two weeks. So every every two weeks. So that every two us- weeks, we're doing on we party on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that's just how we roll. So, but yeah, it's the next show will be on the first week of June for those who help. For those who know, <laughs> and yeah. uh, for those who, um, if you do find us, we we are all over social media: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, like us, share us, subscribe. We actually have a YouTube channel, so. This episode will be on our YouTube channel, as well as past episodes are there, always for you to reference. So if you're looking to burn some time, something to listen to while you're at work, check us out. Uh, add us to your, your lists of uh, social media and your YouTube channels. And uh, what's that? And if you have any Nissan news out there or you know somebody important that wants to get on the show like uh, Mr. Josh here and uh, <laughs> or you got new news that we need to know about in the community, doesn't matter how big, how small, we'll talk about it. You got to let us know. We are a community here. We are here to support you. You can check us out at info at NissanNerd.com. 
Absolutely. And last thing here before we get out here, uh, shout out to our friend. We had a really nice message from a, a friend of ours, James Miles. I, I shared we, we shared that message. James had a real nice uh, letter of encouragement saying that he, he really likes to show uh, James. If you're listening to us uh, either live or, uh, you know, after the fact, if you hear this, thanks, man, for, for the, the words of encouragement. We definitely appreciate it and uh, definitely hope uh, uh, you continue watching with us anyway. Well, thank you. I want to give a uh, shout out to all the nerds in the house. Kudos to all you bastards for being with us here. We love you all. We'll see you till the next time. Um, Josh, again, man, I love you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you again. Okay. So uh, we'll have to catch up at an event. Tell the wife I said hi. Hope I didn't get you in trouble. If you're sleeping outside tonight, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> All right. Uh, Kudos well, to all you guys. I want to say thank you. A last kampai. Yes. Get the jug, For those who are there, whatever you have left, there. whatever you get got, clink. Out. There you go. All right. Kampai. Mm -hmm. Josh, can I ask a quick question? You've drank that entire Culligan water bottle. Where have you been peeing this whole time? <laughs> Is there another I jug? I still got to go to the gym, so I got to polish it off. Woo. What is that? What's polish? Okay, uh, moving on. We're going to talk about something else. All right. Till next time, Nissan Nerd episode. Compi to everybody. Get in your garage. Build something cool. Go to an event. Have a great time. We'll see you next time. All right. Oh, yeah. I love the snowboard. I love the snowboard. Dude, did I you just like it. this rapid fire click on the button? I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. It's only going to get worse. It's only getting it's worse. Only it's it's all down worse. here from it's all downhill from it here. It is all downhill from here. All right. Uh, Mike, I love you man. Till next love time. You too, man. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Nissan Nerd podcast. <laughs>